Tonight, Open Table is bought by Priceline. The FCC investigates the Netflix deals with the ISPs, and Samsung announces a new tablet. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 108 for Friday, June 13th, 2014. I'm Jason Howell. Let's get right to the tech feed. Priceline is buying restaurant booking service OpenTable for roughly $2.6 billion in cash. OpenTable charges restaurants fees to book diners on top of monthly fees to use its software and has an inventory of more than 31,000 uh, establishments. Sorry, uh, Over the past decade, Priceline has scooped up travel websites like Booking.com and Kayak.com, and this latest merger extends Priceline's customer base to include the 15 million people who book restaurants through OpenTable each month. OpenTable's business relied on the U.S. for 80% of revenues last year, but Priceline gets about 80% of its revenues from abroad. So there's big global growth potential here. This deal comes about a month after travel review service TripAdvisor bought La Fourchette, a Paris-based reservation service with more than 12,000 restaurants. Forbes is reporting that Google plans to launch a new health service called Google Fit at its I.O. conference for developers being held on June 25th and 26th. Google Fit is said to collect and aggregate data from popular fitness trackers and health-related apps and would directly compete with Apple's recently announced HealthKit framework launched last week at WWDC and rolling out with its new mobile platform iOS 8 this fall. Last month, Samsung also unveiled Sammy, a biometric data platform that collects health information from devices and apps. Sources familiar with Google's plans tell Forbes Google Fit will aggregate data through open APIs and will also announce partnerships with wearable device makers at I.O. Google Fit could allow a wearable device that measures data like steps or heart rate to interface with Google's cloud-based services and become a part of the Google Fit ecosystem. Samsung has announced its newest tablet line, the Galaxy Tab S, which will be available in 8.4 inch and 10.5 inch sizes for $399 and $499 respectively. The Galaxy Tab S models are thinner, lighter, and faster than earlier Samsung tablets and have Super AMOLED displays that Samsung says outperform LCD displays. Uh, they're quite lean, they're just 6.6 .6 millimeters thick and a few grams lighter than the iPad mini, which clearly Samsung is gunning for on price. The base models have 16 gigs of internal storage with support for micro SD cards up to 128 gigabytes in capacity and Wi-Fi connectivity as well. The company says LTE equipped and larger capacity models will be available later this year. Today, the Federal Communications Commission said it's going to look more closely at the current deals Netflix has with Comcast and Verizon. Currently, Netflix is paying both companies to boost customers' streaming speeds, but argues it shouldn't have to. Comcast and Verizon counter that Netflix should bear the cost of the upgrades the ISPs must make to accommodate Netflix's rising traffic levels. FCC Chairman Tom Wheeler says he's received copies of the agreements involving Netflix, Comcast, and Verizon, and would be asking other content companies to provide their own information about the paid deals they've struck with ISPs as well. Or, as Wheeler put it in a statement, quote, we are looking under the hood, end quote. AT&T has disclosed in a filing to California regulators that personal information such as social security numbers and call records were accessed for a number of AT&T mobility customers in a breach that took place between April 9th and 21st. The company believes employees of one of its service providers accessed accounts as part of an effort to request codes from AT&T that are used to unlock phones in the secondary mobile phone market. AT&T isn't saying how many customers were affected, but California state law requires disclosures if an incident sorry, affects at least 500 customers in the state. While inside customer accounts, those who access the data also had access to deals, details of the time, date, duration, and destination of phone calls made by customers. Now, coming up, the first kick of the World Cup was done by a paraplegic wearing an exoskeleton robotic suit. Really, I'm not fooling. But first, I am joined by Don Reisinger, technology columnist at CNET and now a regular host on Friday's Tech News Today, our sister show. Welcome, Don. Hey, I'm happy to be here, yeah. Jason. Good to have you back. I mean, Spoke it, with you I never hours knew you could ago. talk that fast. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't either, actually. Uh, my mouth kind of hurts now. Uh, <laughs> well, 
I th I could go somewhere with that. But yeah, don't, not. yeah. Dude, let's just squash <laughs> that. Uh, let's Friday. just go back to tech. Yeah, Thank you very much. Now you wrote a, an article today. Uh, Amazon's May Day button average response time is under ten seconds. Now, obviously, May Day. This is a customer service with real people answering questions on uh, Amazon's tablets and. Pretty, pretty unique in the space. Seems to be working really well for Amazon. What do you think? Yeah, I guess so. I mean, <laughs> according to Amazon, it's working well. I, you know, I haven't tried out the service myself. Um, but Amazon, you know, I think this is more a, a, a PR ploy. I think the timing is interesting. We have the, um, the event they're hosting coming up very soon, next week. And I think this is part of a broader rollout of May Day. And they're saying, you know, it would be great. If we tell people how great it really is, and not only that, but we share these really kooky things about how it works. <laughs> what? Okay, so what are some All of right. the kooky things? Kooky. What exactly you happened? Kook. I, kook yeah, I, I really want kook. Old. It's Friday. Yeah, lots. You want lots of kook. So, uh, um, <laughs> so anyway, um, they said you know like the, the, these people would get on May Day, and they would ask for ask for help on how to beat an Angry Birds level. They would all make peanut butter and jelly in different ways. These, a group of friends made peanut butter and jelly sandwiches in different ways and then asked the tech advisor on the Kindle Fire HDX, look, which is the best way? Now, when Amazon launched this service, they said this is a tech advice, this is a tech support system. And so far it's being used by that. I mean, 75% of people are using it, um, that instead of calling Amazon or anything else. But is it really? Oh, here's a better one. Hold on, before I continue, <laughs> a guy asked for an Amazon tech support person to ask his now fiance to marry him. I mean, what the hell's going on yeah. out here? It's, I mean, it, this is the world we live in. That now May Day is not just a May Day. May Day is really not the right name for this thing. It should be something like uh, I, I, I don't I don't know. Pick a name. We gotta find a name. Everyone in the chat room, find a name. I don't. I can't think of something right now. Br Brutus. But it's. Yeah, Brutus, I yeah, love it. Sure. So, no, but it's fascinating that this is what people are doing with this. It's becoming a kind of a running joke and kind of in the way that Siri was a running joke when that first launched, yeah. everyone was like, oh, you know, hey, Siri, uh, am I, you know, whatever. And it would respond, but this is a real person on the other end. And there's actual interaction going on with someone halfway around the world that you don't know. It's really, really interesting and it's kind of funny. I mean, is... Is this sustainable for Amazon? If if this is a service that's geared for technology support on their devices, and that's that's pretty cool in and of itself. When I've seen it kind of take place in in real time, and it's super quick, and there's somebody on the other end, pretty neat. But if it's not being used that way, is is that sustainable for Amazon? Well, as yes. a service, I mean, I I, I, I think it is. I'll be yeah. honest with you, because I you know Amazon was highlighting some of these funny stories. You know, the vast majority of those call of those you know inquiries are you know I have an issue with my Wi-Fi. I can't figure out how to set up this. I can't figure out how to set up that. That's really the focus of this thing, and that's where the the bulk of the right. the questions are coming from. But and even Amazon makes it very clear in the software. You know, this is what this is for. But. Um, I even think it's sustainable if it goes beyond that. I really do. I honestly do. I think if this is a thing that Amazon puts in ads and commercials and says, hey, look, you know, these are what people are saying um, and asking, and this is how we're responding, that's unique. That's interesting. And I think mm -hmm. it... It sets it apart from Siri, and and you know Apple has focused very very much on Siri. Siri is is in the product roadmap at Apple, and if Mayday can be something that can be extended to other products, the Fire TV, uh, an upcoming smartphone, whatever, I think that's a pretty intriguing alternative to Siri. I think that's a really good point that you make. Actually, Siri, Google Now, the personal assistants that people kind of. Uh, pretend in a certain way that their device has a little person working inside, giving them advice, giving them uh, you know details about their day. This is an actual little person inside of their device, right. just right. on the other side of the, you know the, the the country or whatever, talking to them. You think I can get my psychiatrist in there? Like if he, I, just <laughs> I go, don't know. Hey. It might be the way of the future. Yeah, who knows? Yeah, uh, that, we're doing this on Skype right, right now, so uh, we're, we're building no a strangers. Um, <laughs> now, so you said you think this is going to extend other devices. Do you think it might hit? I don't know, a three D phone ish type uh, device it, next week. I think it definitely will. And that's yeah. and this and I think the timing of this press release says everything you need to know about Mayday. Mayday is a yeah. feature that Amazon believes is very important and it's going to be put into to future products. And so I think we'll see it in the 3D smartphone we're expected to see next week and also in all the 
the uh, Kindle devices, the the tablets that are probably going to launch later this year to update the, the current slate. Yeah, I think um, kind of speaking of the 3D phone, I think this kind of speaks to Amazon's strength right now in the marketplace. We, we know that, you know, they have that event next Wednesday. Like you said, this is all timed really well for that. And, and uh, I think what's interesting about the event is that it's for media, but it's also for consumers. And that right there is kind of Amazon's strength right now. They're really playing the consumer-friendly card. Um, I know... I'm kind of guilty of thinking that, that the 3D phone might be gimmick more than anything else, but maybe Amazon's onto something. Do you think they're tapping into something here with the general consumer that uh, pundits are missing? Um, no. Uh, <laughs> I, 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 you know, 3D, I, I, you know, the television makers tried it. Uh, how many times have we seen virtual reality come and go? Yeah. Facebook's acquisition of that is, well, we won't get into that. But, um, you know, look, I, I think it's gimmick. I think we've learned a lot of lessons from companies like Nintendo that were successful, but now the market has changed. Those gimmicks don't matter as much. Microsoft learned that lesson, I think, with the Kinect. That's why um, as a, as a uh, connectless bundle. Um, 3D is a cool concept in and of itself, but in practice, it really doesn't work well, and it relies heavily on third parties and third-party developers. And I don't think Amazon right now can attract those those developers. But mm. you know, the thing that you have going, I think the thing, a great point you make, is that Amazon is the consumer-friendly company. You know, it's 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 the nicer Google in some ways. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, Google was always that company for a while, and then things started to go sour. Amazon is now that company, but um, let's just say that it it develops some sort of big time smartphone, and we see it next week. You know, the big question on everyone's mind should be: Are the apps going to follow and support this feature set? And if they don't. Um, I think we're in trouble because it's not, I mean, we have, we have the Google play marketplace, we have Apple's app store, and then there's Amazon's app store and Samsung's apps marketplace. You know, those are the other ones. Those are the things we think about it, it as, in a, as a second, in a second breath. Sure. That's a problem for Amazon that needs to be addressed. Yeah. Awesome. Great points. Um, Don Reisinger, thank you so much for joining me for That's a it? second time today. Second That's time. It. Yes. Oh my God! Look, are, I could have okay? done that stand on my head. Well, there you I go. We would talk about life. I mean, <laughs> all right, fine. <laughs> you know, it's Jeez. a short show. Go ahead and drink your vodka. I know that. I know you've been I waiting. I haven't talked to do in that. a while. <laughs> I haven't talked in a while, Jason. I wanted to hear about what's going on with your life. Well, you know what? We get to talk next Friday because you are oh, the Friday co-anchor on Tech News oh, today, and it'll be good to have you wait. back then. <laughs> uh, where can people right, follow your lobby. work otherwise online? Where can they just, find you? Just go to um, yeah, CNET, obviously, eWeek, Slash Gear, different places like that. Um, go to at Don Reisinger, R-E-I Singer. It's very hard to spell, I know. R-E-I Singer. And on Twitter, and you'll kind of figure out all that stuff. But, and you know, that's... check me out here. All right. There you go, man. All right, have a great right. weekend. Enjoy your vodka. Hey, thanks a lot. All right, I enjoyed it. All right, and finally, the 2014 FIFA World Cup kicked off yesterday with a standard ceremonial first kick, but this one was different. Giuliano Pinto, a 29-year-old paraplegic, kicked the official game ball with a robotic exoskeleton that he was wearing and controlled with his mind. The suit is the invention of Miguel Nicolilas, a scientist at Duke University. The suit works by reading neural signals from the brain using a cap fitted with sensors which are decoded and command a pair of hydraulic legs to move. The wearer can receive tactile stimulation, stimulation when walking with the exoskeleton by vibrating the user's arm when the foot touches the ground. Man, that's some cool stuff right there. That's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. Subscribe to this show. Why don't you do it? Go to twit.tv slash TN2, and you can also write us at TN2 at twit.tv. Please don't miss our morning news program. That's Tech News Today, every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm Jason Howell. Thank you so much for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by cashfly.com.